this video will be controlling 32 wait is it 32 yes like 32 relays with this esp01 yes are you sure yeah so they are saying in this video we are controlling 32 relays using this tiny esp01 module let's see how to do this video will be a proof of concepts on how you can extend the pins of your ESP board and can make actual working projects out of it. So practically we can control only 4 relays with ESP01 module as it has only 4 GPIO pins built in. Well I do have made a separate video on how to control 4 relays with ESP01 so do watch out that video after completing this video. So now the point is how we can control 32 relays with it. Now let me tell you 32 is just a number while well, you can control n number of relays using just this ESP01 module. So let me show you the technique of doing it. So for making this project you will need a generic ESP266 board, multiple relays. Here I am using two 16 channel relay panels so in total 32 relays I am using. And after that you need another microcontroller board. Here I am using my Arduino Mega board. So now majority of you people may have already figured out like hey you are just transferring the data from ESP to the Arduino and controlling the relays and like Ruko jara, sabar karo. No it's not that pretty straightforward. Transferring the data from one board to another board and that to a reliable transmission is a kind of a difficult task. We need to ensure a successful transmission from one microcontroller board to another microcontroller board and control the relays on that board as well and that too in parallel. So now just sit back and observe how we did it successfully. Now before that you need to connect all the components in this manner. Now as we are going to control the relays using the blink app, let's first configure it. So open a blink app on your smartphone and click on new project. Give a project name, I will name it as 32 appliances. Select the device as ESP8266 and connection type as Wi-Fi. Now click on create project. So an authentication token will be sent to your registered email ID which we will require at the time of coding. So now just click on OK. Now tap on the screen and add button. Now tap on the button to configure it. First of all, give button a name. I will name it as Relay1. Uh, now here in the pin, we have to select virtual and I will select virtual pin V1. Now in the mode, we will select switch. Now click on OK. So with this, we have successfully created one button in which we will be sending the data 1 and 0 on virtual pin V1. Similarly, we will add 32 different buttons on the Blink app. Luckily, I already made the project in my Blink application. So this is how the complete project will look like after you add the 32 uh, buttons in it. So that's all about the Blink application side. Now we are left with the coding part of this project. So as we are using two different microcontroller boards, we need to have two different codes for that. So now let's just observe both the codes and see how it works. So here are the code for both the uh, controller boards. So on the left hand side we have the code for ESP266 board and on the right hand side we have the code for the Arduino board. Uh, let's just start with the Arduino board first. So first of all we have to include the library called Arduino JSON.h which you can easily find on GitHub or in the you know, you know library manager of this Arduino ID. Just download it and install it on your Arduino. Okay. After that we have defined the pins as, as output. So here as I am using 32 relays in my project, I have defined 32 GPIOs of Arduino as output. So here you can choose any random GPIO pins of your controller board. After that, initially I have just uh, you know uh, load down the state of all the relays by just uh, writing the command as digital write pin numbers comma low. Okay. After that I am beginning the serial monitor at the baud rate 9600. Okay. Good to go. Uh, let's jump onto the wide loop of the uh, code. So here, first of all, we have defined one document uh, for storing the JSON string. Okay. So here in that JSON, we have the key as type and value as request. Okay. So JSON string looks something like this. Okay. So this is the JSON formatted data which we'll be sending to the ESP8266 board. Uh, let us uh, move step by step. First of all, we have stored a uh, request inside this type key. After that, we are serializing the JSON and sending the JSON string through serial communication through RxTX of Arduino okay so hence uh, the data will be stored in the dock and that data will be transferred to the serial monitor and the data will look something like this okay so now let's move ahead 
So here we have one boolean called message ready which is initially assigned a value false okay and after that we have a string variable called message uh, which will be storing the data coming from the other controller board okay so here we have the while loop whose condition is whenever the message ready uh, variable has the value false the stay inside the loop and as we've seen earlier the message ready boolean was initially assigned the value as false so for the first time this condition will get satisfied it will come inside the while loop okay after that here we have a if condition which says if serial dot available that means if anything's coming from the serial uh, you know pins of the arduino board this condition will get satisfied if there is no data coming up this condition won't get satisfied so now let's jump on to the esp266 board and let's see what data the esp board will be sending because until and unless we don't receive any data from the esp266 board through serial communication uh, the code will stuck inside this while loop only so now let's jump on the esp266 code so here, first of all, uh, we have declared these many libraries, which is uh, nothing but the Blink library and the Arduino JSON library. Okay, so that are the mandatory library to be installed to make this project work for you. After that, we have to provide the authentication token, which must be sent to your registered email ID. So just uh, copy that authentication token and paste it here. Great. After that, you have to provide the SID name and password of your Wi-Fi router, as this project do require the internet connection. Okay. After that. Uh, let us jump on to the uh, setup part directly. So here is the setup part. So here also we have declared the serial communication at 9600 baud rate. So this is also a mandatory a step which need to be considered. The baud rate of both the boards which are communicating between each other should be same. Okay. So as you can see, we have the 9600 baud rate for Arduino board and 9600 baud rate for ESP266 board as well. Great. After that, we are beginning the blink communication using this simple uh, line of code. Great. After that, let's jump on to the void loop part. Here it says while serial dot available. So here we have a while loop whose condition is if, if there is any data coming from the uh, serial pins or the serial pins of the ESP266 board, then this condition will get satisfied. So what will happen uh, if there is no data coming from the serial pin, the code of the ESP266 board will won't be working at all because uh, as you can see, first of all, we have the while condition and after that we have a if condition who says if message ready variable is true, then go inside and message variable uh, message ready variable is true is happening inside that while loop. Okay. So if we uh, don't receive anything from the what you can say a uh, serial pins of the ESP266 board, the code inside the ESP266 board won't be doing anything at all. Okay. So let's see. Okay. So now what will happen? Let's see. So initially, as we have seen that our Arduino board is sending a serial data with a JSON formatted syntax, which is type request. Okay. So this will be sent to the ESP266 board. That means this condition will be satisfied. Great. Okay, let's jump inside that if uh, while loop. So we are just storing all the data coming from the Arduino side inside the message variable. Okay, great. And after that, we are just turning on the message ready uh, boolean variable. Uh, we're just assigning the message ready variable as true. Okay, value will be stored as true. Great. Uh, it will just uh, jump out of this while loop as uh, this data will be sent only once. Great. So now the message ready variable is true. So if condition will be satisfied. After that, we are again declaring a JSON document and after that we are just deserializing that data. Okay, so this is the serialized JSON. We are just deserializing it and storing that uh, deserialized data into the doc object. Correct. After that, we are just checking if the doc type key has value request. If it is the value request, just send type as response, LED as pin and status as pin status so pin and pin status uh, i will let you know just in a while so what's happening inside this is whenever the esp266 receive a type request uh, key value pair from other controller board it will be sending uh, the json formatted string which will look something like this uh, now this has uh, three key value pair first is the type so as we are sending the response the value of the type is response then LED. Now the LED will contain the number of GPIO pin whose status we need to change. Okay. So currently for an example, I just took the example as GPIO 22 and the status will contain the status of the GPI value. Okay. So currently, uh, for example, I have taken the G status as one. So this line of code says, this is the response from the controller. Just turn on 
the uh, LED or relay connected to GPIO 22 as one means turn on that LED or turn on that relay okay so this one data will be sending from ESP266 to the Arduino board now we are left with what is this pin and what is this pin status and what are the values of that okay so for that we'll go inside the blink part of the code so as we all know whenever we are receiving any data from the virtual pin uh, we need to assign this function okay so let's just take example of this much line of code only. So whenever we are sending the data from virtual pin V1, that uh, virtual pin V1, the code will go inside this function. Okay, let's just jump inside this function. So here we are just assigning the pin variable as value 22 and the pin status variable as the value which we'll be receiving from the virtual pin. Maybe it's one, maybe it's zero. It depends upon the button state on the Blink application. Okay. So here the pin 22 is defined by myself. You can define any num any GPR number. Maybe it's 31, 13, 14, 12. Any GPR number you can define here. Okay. It's all up to you. You need to decide which GPIO should you assign to the virtual pin V1, V2, anything. Okay. So for the virtual pin V1, I have assigned the value 22. That is GPIO 22 of Arduino. For V2, I have assigned the value 23 and so on, okay? So, uh, in the end, you'll be uh, having a data something like this based upon the virtual pin uh, which you are pressing on the Blink application side. So, this much data will be sent serially to the Arduino Uno board. So, let's just jump onto the Arduino code and see what happens next, okay? So, as soon as we receive the serial data, so this condition will be satisfied, great. After that, we'll be storing all the data coming from the serial monitor inside the message variable, great. And after that, we are just assigning the message ready well variable as value true. Great. Amazing. Okay. So this, uh, okay. So as soon as the message ready variable becomes true, it will jump out of this while loop. Okay. Now let's see what happens. So as soon as we receive this data, the JSON serial data, what we'll do, we will just deserialize the data and save inside this doc object. And after that, we'll just read the value of LED and status and, we'll, and we will store it inside the LED variable and LED status variable. Now we are just left with the one last command of the code and that is digital write, okay? So using digital write, we can just turn on and off the uh, appliances based on the number which we are receiving from the ESP8266 board serially, okay? So for example, so if we take the example that the ESP is sending this much line of code to the, what we can say, Arduino board. So in that case, the LED will get the value as 22 and the LED status will get the value as one. So with this much line of code, we will be able to turn on the LED or the relay attached to GPIO 22 of the Arduino board. And likewise, we can turn on and off n number of relays attached to the Arduino board using the ESP8266, the generic ESP8266 board only. So yeah, that was the coding part uh, used in both the controller boards. So that was the explanation about the working of the code. I hope you got to know how the things are working, how the data is being transferred from one board to another board. So hit the like button if you really loved the explanation and got to know about how things are working. Now here I would like to give a big shout out to Acrobotics YouTube channel as I use their code as a reference for making this project. And so I'll attach the link of that video from which I took the reference in the description of this video. So that's it about the coding part. Now we'll upload the code to the respective boards. Now uploading the code into Arduino board, it's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. But for ESP266, we need to do some separate connections for uploading the code. Well, I have made a separate video on how you can upload the code onto your generic ESP board using the Arduino Uno board. I'll attach the link for that as well in the description of this video. So do watch it out in case you don't know how to program that generic ESP board. So now we are done with all the parts of the project. Now let's just power it up. So here I'm using this 5 volt 3 ampere power adapter considering that each relay will consume around 70 milliamperes of current. Now here first of all I will reset my ESP board and after resetting that I will reset my Arduino board just to make this both controller board get in sync with each other. So here as you can see I am able to control the relays using the Blink application. Well there is a delay of around 2 seconds in between but yeah the project is working for all the relays on the board. Here one thing to note is that we won't be able to send the data of multiple relays at a time. For example, if I just turn on both the buttons at a time, on the other side, there will be only one relay which is turned on and that is because if you remember the JSON string, then we are sending the data of only one relay at a time. So if you want to send the multiple relays data, you just need to expand the JSON string and you will be able to send multiple data at a time. 
So yeah, this was all about the proof of concepts on how you can extend the pins of your ESP board to make some practical projects out of it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this project. If yes, do press the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And now just wait for my next video and then explore and share with me. Techie SMS.